Autodesk Maya is a popular software tool amongst 3D artists. It's used for processes like modeling, animation, and rendering. The software can be pretty demanding on a computer's hardware. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at the kind of components that you would need if you are looking to build a high performance workstation for Maya. As I mentioned, there's a few different processes that make up a workflow in Maya. Maya can be used for modeling, animation, and rendering. When you are working with animation, you also have the option to do some scripting with a language like Python. Each of these processes makes use of a computer's hardware in different ways. So it is useful to take a look at which processes make use of the GPU, CPU, whether that's single or multi-thread, um, RAM. From there, we can talk about how to optimize your computer for these processes. So generally, the most important component for Maya is the CPU, but certain processes make use more of single core performance rather than multi-threaded performance. If you're mainly going to be working with modeling or animation, you're going to want to focus on CPU single thread performance. Scripting and rendering, on the other hand, those are both multi-threaded tasks. So if you are going to be using a language like Python to speed up your animation workflow, uh, you know, that's going to be able to make use of multiple CPU threads. Rendering gets sped up by having multiple CPU threads as well. You are going to want as many powerful cores as possible there. In terms of graphics cards, Maya only really uses the GPU for the viewport. So having a more powerful GPU will make the viewport a lot smoother. Keep in mind though, that you can also use a GPU renderer within Maya, such as Arnold. In that case, you would benefit a lot more from a strong GPU than a fast CPU. It is a bit of a common misconception that you would need a Quadro graphics card for Maya, but even according to Autodesk specifications at the moment, Quadro is not required for Maya you are able to get optimal performance from a GeForce card. And in fact, GeForce cards are officially supported. Speaking of Autodesk recommendations, we can take a look at their websites and we will find their requirements, which are actually quite minimal. These are of course just the minimum requirements. We would absolutely recommend a much more powerful machine than what is specified here. All you need is a 64-bit Intel or AMD processor with multiple cores, which every CPU released at this point in time falls under eight gigs of RAM at least, four gigs of space, three button mouse. And we're also gonna take a look at their list of supported graphics cards. You'll notice that the first ones they list are Nvidia's latest Quadro graphics cards, including the RTX A3000 to A6000. There's also some of the cards that were released last year, such as RTX 4000 to 8000, a few other Quadros. A lot of these you'll notice are Quadro, but you will also notice GeForce cards are officially supported as well. Everything from, okay, firstly, this is actually a mistake. This is an, this is not an RTX 1650, it is a GTX 1650. But everything from even as low as a 1650 to a 3090, these are officially supported by Autodesk. So in terms of what we'd recommend, you are going to want a CPU that has a great balance of single and multi-threaded performance. Of course, depending on which processes you make use of more in your personal workflow, that is going to dictate which particular processor you opt for. So at the time of recording, which is April 2022, there are a few CPUs that I would narrow down as the ideal options. The first one would be the Intel Core i9-12900K. Of course, you would overclock that. There's the Ryzen 9 5950X. Threadrippers are good in certain cases. For the sake of this example, I included the Threadripper 3970X because I feel that that has a good balance of, you know, a really high core count without being quite as expensive as a 3990X. In this example, I also included the i7 12700H, which is Intel's latest i7 laptop CPU. So looking at these examples, you can see the 12900K specializes in single thread performance, while its multi-thread performance doesn't quite match that of the 5950X. Beyond that, the Threadripper has absolutely ridiculous multi-thread performance, but it does lack in single thread performance. The i7-12700H actually outperforms the 5950X in single thread performance if you are looking for a mobile option, but keep in mind, its multi-threaded performance is nowhere near any of the three above. There are a few other considerations when you're looking to buy a laptop. We always recommend a desktop over a laptop, but there are certain instances where a desktop is simply not an option. So to continue on these points with these recommendations, 
if you're going to be doing more modeling and animation without scripting, an Alder Lake Intel would be your best bet. But if you are going to be doing a lot of rendering and this takes up a lot of your time, large projects, you're going to want something with a lot of threads. If you really need multi-core performance, the Threadripper would be your best bet. We haven't been recommending the Ryzen 9 5950X quite as much recently because the i9-12900K supports much more modern technologies and it also costs a lot less. These technologies include recently released DDR5 memory, which runs much faster than DDR4. It also boosts CPU performance. You also get access to PCIe 5 for GPUs, and you get a lot more PCIe 4 slots or SSDs. PCIe 5.0 GPUs aren't actually on the market just yet, but when they are released, they're going to have twice the bandwidth. So if GPU power is something that you're going to want to make use of, Intel would be the way. PCIe 4 SSDs are the fastest storage available at the moment. Having more slots available means that you have access to a lot more ultra-fast storage. If you're working with extremely large projects, this makes a huge difference because you get to store everything on the fastest storage possible rather than slower PCIe 3 or even SATA SSDs. Keep in mind, these stats are more important for CPU rendering, but it is possible to do rendering on the GPU as well as we've mentioned with Arnold. Looking at our GPU recommendations, I've got these two graphs over here. The top one shows performance of our recommended desktop GPUs. The bottom one includes laptop GPUs along with some desktop GPUs for reference. So if you're gonna be doing GPU rendering, you are of course going to want the most powerful GPU that you can afford. The RTX 3080 Ti would be our recommendation. The RTX 3090 and 3090 Ti are also available, but there does come a point of diminishing returns. If you'll remember, when we took a look at Autodesk's official recommendations, they recommend a GPU with at least 4 gigs of RAM. That would be something like the GTX 1650, which was listed on their supported GPU list. We do recommend that you rather opt for something like an RTX 3050. It has twice as much VRAM, that's 8 gigabytes. Even though this difference over here doesn't seem like much, it does have a lot of features that make it better suited to something like Maya. This includes that it is a PCIe 4 GPU rather than the PCIe 3 GTX 1650. It also has improved ray tracing capabilities. Looking at laptops, the most powerful that I would personally recommend would be the RTX 3070 which is an eight gigabyte GPU in a laptop. There is a 3080 laptop GPU, but I wouldn't really recommend it over the RTX 3070 because laptops with that GPU tend to cost a lot more while still being outperformed by the desktop version of the RTX 3060. So you won't really see that gain in performance, especially when the system is under load. The reason that I say this is due to the thermal constraints of laptops. Laptops don't have quite as much room for things like cooling and airflow. So when a high performance part is being stressed, pushed to its limits, then it tends to thermal throttle. The RTX 3050 would be our absolute minimum recommendation in a laptop. It does get outperformed by the GTX 1660. It's about the same as a 1650 in a desktop. 3060 offers quite some good value for money. Again, if a desktop is a viable option for you at all, we would always recommend a desktop system over a laptop. Although the portability may seem appealing to you, there are a lot of compromises that come with that portability. This includes the aforementioned thermal constraints. There's also the concerns of upgradability and maintenance. However, if portability is an absolute necessity, sometimes laptops just have to be the only option. The amount of RAM that you're gonna need will really depend on the size of your projects. As a general rule, in 2022, we do not recommend anything less than 16 gigabytes in any system. Having only 8GB of RAM at this point will even make just browsing the internet a little bit frustrating. 16GB is a good place to start for Maya, however, a lot of people are going to want to opt for 32GB instead. This amount of RAM does give you more headroom for things like multitasking and future-proofing. Since the CPU does get divided up for rendering, each core does make use of a certain amount of RAM for rendering. If you're working with extremely high resolutions and you're going to be working with complex lighting, then you may even need 64 gigabytes or more. 
Keep in mind that in one of our systems, you will of course be able to install more RAM in the future, with our Vulkan supporting a maximum of 128GB of DDR5 at the moment. So apart from the obvious CPU, GPU and RAM, there are a few other points that you are going to want to consider when building a high performance workstation for Maya. We've already mentioned the option to go for a laptop or a desktop. Once again, we really recommend a desktop if it is an option because you would need to pay quite a bit of money for your laptop to even be close to the desktop. Cooling is extremely important in any system. A CPU will not be able to reach its maximum performance levels without appropriate cooling. With the kind of cooling that we use in our systems, we are able to push the CPUs as hard as possible. We can overclock them without sacrificing reliability and stability. In terms of storage, we'd recommend speed over capacity to start off with. You can always install more storage later on. If you can get a PCIe 4.0 SSD in there, that will be optimal. PCIe 4.0 SSDs are a lot faster than previous generation drives. They have a maximum read speed of 7,000 megabytes per second. Write speeds can reach around 6,800 megabytes per second. We are currently using Aorus 7000S drives, which have a great combination of performance and reliability. Their cooling is top-notch as well, especially with the motherboards that we use, which ship with high-end heat sinks. The motherboard is responsible for all the connectivity and power delivery of the system. So you're going to want, you know, high-end cooling on the motherboard, large heat sinks, high-end VRMs with a lot of power phases. You're also going to want to make sure you have built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth because if you're spending money on a system in 2022, it's just unacceptable to not have Wi-Fi built in. Another component that other builders often skimp out on is the power supply. A high performance power supply is essential in ensuring the longevity of your system. It will make the system a lot more reliable and stable. Just keep in mind that efficiency is at least as important as wattage. So we would always recommend a power supply that is at least 80 plus gold rated. When we're using larger power supply units, we even opt for things like 80 plus platinum or titanium. The case may seem like it's just there to hold old components in it, but certain cases have better features like rubber grommets and Velcro tie downs, which makes cable management even more effective. Clean cable management isn't just for aesthetic purposes, it also makes airflow better, it makes it a lot easier to build in and rebuild in, and it gives dust fewer places to settle. If you are getting a pre-built system, you are going to want long-term support and stability. So a long-term warranty is essential, and the builders need to have a high degree of technical expertise. So of course, the best computer that you would be able to get for Maya would be built by us, Moderna Computers. We have extensive experience in both hardware and software, and we've done a lot of research to make sure that the computers we build are well equipped for the exact workflow of the user. We only use the most premium parts, as I've mentioned, such as Noctua cooling and Aorus motherboards and SSDs. Compared to other builders, we have a much more complete building process. Apart from just the assembly, we also thoroughly test every single component in the system. If there is any error, this is extremely rare. We will pick it up before you do, and we will replace the component. Once we have confirmed that every single component is up to our standards, we then do optimization of every component. If we're going with Intel CPUs, they get overclocked. And that is whether we're going with our Vulcans, which have unlocked CPUs, or our Apollos, which feature Intel's 12th gen locked CPUs. Since we're using high-end motherboards, we don't need a Z series board to overclock locked CPUs like the i5-12400 and the i7-12700. These are then able to outperform CPUs used by other builders that may seem like they are more powerful on paper. This is confirmed during our benchmarking step in which we compare our current systems to systems we have built previously and those built by other builders. Every single one of our systems ships with a three-year warranty on parts and a lifetime hardware support. You get free labor on upgrades and repairs. If a part is outside warranty, you would only need to pay for the replacement part if it's still within warranty, you don't need to pay for anything but one-way shipping. Finally, our systems are completely set up and ready to go. You just need to install the software that you're going to be using. If you're using Autodesk software like Maya, even better, we can install the trial version and then you just need to log into your account and activate it. So thanks again for watching. We are going to be doing more videos like this for other software in the future. If there's any particular software you'd like us to discuss, you can just comment below and we will look into it and do our best to upload a video as soon as possible. Thanks again.